You better learn how to use it. If you got to pop that mask off and say it. Have you ever had to holler help? Some of y'all ain't never had to holler help, right? Y'all have been beat up and had some people jumping on y'all. None of y'all really, some of y'all never had to holler help. But if you call holler help, you take your helmet off, you take your hat off, you take everything that's restricting you, and you holler help. You even make you a little just like this because you want to know, I want it to go further. I want to go at least over there. I wake up the people in the apartment. Come on, somebody. The way the enemy is coming against you, you ought to be hollering help. But the way you holler help is say Jesus. Would you clap your hands for Jesus? Oh, help me here, Holy Ghost. Don't clap it for the preacher, clap it for Jesus. Let me know that, come on. Let me know that, come on. Amen. Well, um, I'm going to ask my lovely wife to come. She's going to welcome our guest today. Man, glory to God. Ditto everything Pastor Conley is saying. He's an awesome God. I, I, I love him. I adore him. I appreciate him. But at this time, instead of me going into all this praise and worship, because you know, everybody knows I'm a praise and worshiper, I love the Lord. But if we do want to welcome our guests, we want to um, let you know that you're welcome here, that God loves you, we love you, and it's just not by happenstance that you are here today. So if we have any guests, please stand up and tell us who you are. You don't even have to be a first-time guest. Just stand up and tell us who you are. If you're not a member of Shepherd's Fold Ministries, stand up and tell us who you are and who invited you. Hallelujah. Glory. Amen. Amen. Yes, ma'am. Tell us your name. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Talia, for coming to visit us. We don't take it lightly when God sends people our way. Amen. I know who you are. I can look at you and tell who you are. <laughs> I praise you. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for coming. Amen. God bless you. God bless you both on behalf of Pastor Conley. You know, we haven't done this in a long time, Shepherd Foles Ministry. I miss uh, Sister Frazier, Sister Talia, y'all sit down. Shepherd's Fold Ministry, stand up and give them a hand clap of praise for God sending you all our way. We appreciate you. We hope that you will hear what the Lord has to say to you. He appointed this day just for you to come and hear what he has to say. So God bless you, and please come again. Amen. Thank you, Sister Kiara, Brother Bubba, for coming. Sister Jennifer, we appreciate We love you. Amen. Javier, my man, what's up? Good to see you. Amen. I like the cut. Amen. Last time I saw you, you was a reggae man. <laughs> Beautiful. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. We thank you that you are awesome, God. You're the great king. There's nobody like you. But Lord, without your Holy Spirit, we are nothing. We can, what we say makes no sense. So we ask you in Jesus' name that you will somehow spark in us or show us glimpses of yourself so that we can have a better understanding. We want to walk with you. We pray, Holy Spirit, for your illumination. Hide us behind the cross and cover us with the blood of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, the doomsday clock was moved here recently. And if you know anything about the doomsday clock, it's a globally recognized indicator of vulnerability of our existence. Uh, the former Irish president, Mary Robinson, at the annual clock unveiling ceremony, she uh, said, it's a striking metaphor of the precarious safe or state of the world, but most frightening, it's a metaphor backed by rigorous scientific scrutiny. And all those big words simply mean that people who get paid to look at global economy, global uh, politics, global getting along together, people, you know, that have a place in this world have gotten together and they take a clock and they move 
the hands. And they're saying we're about 100 seconds away before, now I said midnight, wrote midnight here, but before some type of global uh, catastrophe, uh, either man-made for sure, or set off by uh, a chain of events. But a little known subject that's not talked about much is the day of the Lord. Amen. And I've been on this for a uh, couple weeks now. The day of the Lord. We're going to ex kind of explain to you what the day of the Lord is. Uh, I'll be honest with you that uh, we don't say a lot about it. But this day of the Lord will be the greatest day that ever had, that has ever happened. There ain't no day like it. Not even in the beginning, in the beginning when God created and he made the stars and the moon and all of that. This day of the Lord is absolutely incredible. And every human being will be a part of it. Every person. And I think we need to look at it. Revelation 1 and 10 tells us that John said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. Now, uh, a lot of people get the Lord's day and the day of the Lord mixed up. Sunday is the first day, and John wasn't talking about the first day of the week, which is Sunday. The reason why we go to church on Sunday is because Jesus rose at the end of the Sabbath, early while it was dawning, and so Christians celebrated the first day. That's why we go to the church. But the first day being Sunday and the day of the Lord are two different things. And so we want to know what, just what is it? You know, if you had to tell your children, Mama, Daddy, what's the day of the Lord? You know, Sunday wouldn't be the correct answer. Just what is it? Is it a day of the week? How long would it last? And how will it affect every nation? The book of Revelation was given to us for that reason. So that we could understand the day of the Lord. However, very few people have wanted to deal with it. The revelation means the apocalypse. It means the unveiling. It means uh, the, taking the curtain back. It's just like the curtain behind me is kind of pulled back because it, it, it's implying, the reason is that way, that there's an unveiling. There's an unveiling to the whole earth as to why we're here, who put us here, where we're going when we leave here, what it's going to be like there. This is only a place that you are passing through. If you can remember that, you won't let nothing hold you too long. You won't wait too long in any location or area because you are the pilgrim that is traveling. You Pilgrim that's making progress. You want to read a good Christian theology? There's a book. You can get it online, The Pilgrim's Progress. It shows the various temptations that come to us, the struggles that come to us. But this world is not your eternal place. And the sooner you put your big girl dress on and your big boy pants and face it, the better prepared you're going to be for where you're going because you're going somewhere. This is a hole in place. You're going. There's another colony. There's another kingdom. And every day of your life is about preparation for that place. And the place ain't death. It's amazing. Well, everybody got to die. die. If dying was all to it, then let's eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we die. If that was all to it, the scripture says, you know, we will be of all men most miserable. If only in this life you were called to live, life would not be worth living. Because in this life, there are too many woes, too many. This is not it, children of God. We're the sheep of his pasture. The pasture is the whole earth. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. We're either growing into wheat or growing into tares. 
And tear is the opposite of wheat. They're wild wheats that look like wild uh, growth that looks like wheat, but they are destructive, and they're going to be burned at the end. You know, all the fancy talking and all of how much we know the Lord, it's going to come down to one thing, the day of the Lord. And the Bible teaches us that it is near. On that day in preparation for that day, the setup is going to be like this. In the beginning, the Bible says the earth was void, V-O-I-D, void. Did nobody go there? And it was dark. If you read that, in the beginning, it was void. It was dark. There were no stars. There was no moon. There was no sun. There was no birds. There was nothing. It was just the earth, just a black dot in the nothingness of all that God had created. And the universe is vast. It's vast. Blow your mind. But the earth was just a little dark black dot that was void. Then God steps on the scene and says, let there be light. And the light comes on. And then you know the rest of the story. He put the moon. The moon reflects the light. He put the stars. The stars reflect the sun. They, they reflect. And they were the light that was given. And then God began with creation. And then he began and he created man. Well, let me, let me pick your, poke your imagination here. The day of the Lord when we read the book of Revelation and when we, we really study, it is almost like a reversal that the stars will refuse, refuse to shine. So the Lord is getting ready to come. But just like anybody who is brilliant and bright and the light, the whole world is going to go dark again. The sun won't shine. The moon won't shine. The stars will fall to the earth. Because the day of the Lord, which has been prophesied since the beginning, is about to happen. The greatest day humanity has ever known. The first time the Lord had his day in the beginning, there was no man until he created one man, Adam. The next time he come, all the people of the world that ever lived, man, your mind can't even wrap around it. Not the 8 billion people that's on the earth now. But the 8 billion people that was on the earth 20 years ago and 40 years ago and 100 years ago, and if the numbers weren't that high, all those people, wherever they are, are going to be a part of this grand event. Every so single human being, people in the seas. That's why Revelation brings that out. But the spooky ones will try to spook you and make it like it's so great a mystery. The Lord says, I want to show you how it is when I come. The world will be getting prepared for his coming. But all the human beings, if you can just fathom that, there's not a person that's ever lived that won't be a part of it. How many people that'll be? Amen. The stars won't shine for reasons. But now everybody looking the great day of the Lord and all this, and I mean, we're going to be sober about this conversation. Everything you ever, t a lot of what you were told was a lie in regards to you're going to stand before God and you're going to rap and you're going to, people going to rap and you're going to give a story. You're going to give explanation. It ain't going to be no explanation. No explanation. I'm even talking to some of us who are saying, I'm Christian, I'm going to be out of here. You ain't got your ticket yet. When you say, I got Jesus, I got my ticket. But I mean, they ain't said all aboard yet. Don't go to sleep. You still got some unpacking to do because you can't take your baggage with you. You ain't never had to get out of Dodge like they had to do when I worked with the, the Vietnamese in Asia and they was on boats and they were refugees. They were running. When they left the house, they left with nothing. When we picked them up, amen, they had nothing. They didn't have but the clothes on their back. The same pair of underwear that they left Saigon was the same pair here six weeks later that they were still wearing. Now, you, you imagine that. The same shirt, the same tie. Because you've, you've never known what it's like to have to flee from your house 
in, in terror and never come back. You just run down to your mama them house or run over across the neighbor, and then you know you're going to get back in. But there are people who have had to flee, never to return. You, you, we have no concept of what that's like. But on the day of the Lord, the great day of the Lord, it's near, it's near, and it hastens greatly, even the voice of the day of the Lord. The, the mighty man shall cry there bitterly, Zephaniah 1, 14 to 18. Terror will be on the face of every person on the planet because... There ain't nowhere you can run. If you would read the book, God would tell you, I'm going to call people from out of the earth. I'm calling people from out of the seas. I'm calling them from behind dumpsters. I'm calling them from behind concrete, those that have been put in cement. I'm calling them from where the alligator got them. The alligator died 100 years ago. But I'm calling them out the belly of the alligator. That they died in the jungle. Every single human being is going to be a part of the day of the Lord. And uh, contrary to what you've been told, you know, the day of the Lord, because actually we ain't been told a whole lot, because if you really study the day of the Lord, it is a great day, and it's the day that make mighty men cry. Terror will be upon people's faces. I gave you the scriptures there. Of course, the stars of heaven and the constellations are all going to obey God, and they refuse to shine, just like when Jesus Christ was crucified, it got black. Because the King of kings and the Lord of lords is setting his stage. You know, we've watched TV a little bit. We've saw great kings, you know, especially when you watch uh, movies and stuff about Europe and England and those kinds of places. And the kings, how they come in. Oh, man, the French kings, they're dressed, oh, my God, they're dressed better than a bride at a wedding. I mean, they, they, the garments they got on, the, the, the jewelry, they're kings. And according to their glory, you know, they have an entourage of people. The whole court is standing, and, and some people can't look at him, and, and you have to, you don't turn your back on the king. That's protocol, even in England today. You don't talk to the king, you know, the queen, you don't shake her hand and be all up on her. And all that, you know, America, oh, is she human like I'm human? You know, Bobby's going to jack you up. You're supposed to respect that get to keep your hands off of her yeah and when you come out of presence you bow and you walk backwards because you don't turn your back on them well if we do that for earthly kings you need to just sometime ask god to show you his glory when he come he is the king of kings in other words you can just go google and pull up all kinds of entourages back kings and you ain't seen a king come to town till you see this king come to town and when he comes to town, he's going to shake up the place. One of the things he's going to do is cause the heavens to roll up like a scroll. See, you look up, you see blue skies, you see clouds, you see as far as you can see. You see an airplane, you've been on an airplane. You look up, oh, we way up 30, 40,000 feet, whatever. But when he comes, he's going to roll the, the sky back. It's, it's a part, a domain that he has not allowed us to see right now. What happens beyond the, third, the second and third heavens? He's going to roll, the Bible says the sky will roll up like a scroll. So all the blue skies you see and all that, all that, there's something on the other side of that, that the King of kings and the Lord of glory is holding to the day of the Lord. When he show up, he's going to show up. Better than anybody ever showed up with a limousine. You know how you show up in a limousine, a red carpet deal. Man, y'all didn't watch the Oscars. You know how some of them show up, man. Some of y'all didn't show up for the prom. Remember the prom? You know, he, he going to show up better than all the prom people. Angels with chariots and, and fire. When he come, when he show, he come, he, everybody going to see him. The whole world going to see him at one time. Because he's going to roll the sky back. And the stars refuse to shine, and the sun refuses to shine. And if you read the book, even when the whole deal is finished, it's going to be the light of the Lamb that's going to light up the city. Because he is light, and in him is no darkness at all. So there's a trick coming for the whole world. There's a treat coming for the believers. But there's a trick, because there will be believers on the earth, some believers on the earth at that time. Amen. The day of the Lord. And he's going to break through. Now, 
Obadiah, Joel, Amos, Micah, Zephaniah, Malachi, what do they all have in common? I'm sure you read these books once a week. No, you don't. I'm going to tell you what they are called. They're called the minor prophets. And if you've ever heard that term, the minor prophets. You know what makes them minor? Not because their books are small. In your Bible, sometimes when you're looking at it, we'll wonder what they had to say. You hear about the big prophets, Daniel and them. They're minor because they all prophesied of the day of the Lord. It's amazing how we know so much about Jesus, but we don't have any, very little about the day that he's returning. The rapture was a kill off for us. I just knew him be caught out secretly and yada yada. So really, would you say to hell with the rest of the world? I mean, kind of, that's kind of the attitude we have. That's not the attitude God has with the world. But his people, if we're not careful, just as long as I make it in, just if I can get out. What about your mama and him? What about your children? Your grown children, too, the ones you can't whoop no more. What about your friends, your neighbors? You know? So it's proof that we really don't understand what we think we understood. Because if we knew what hell was really like, if God ever gave you a vision of hell, you would never tell anybody to go there again. Because you have so much power in your mouth that, you know, you could be like helping somebody to find their way. Yeah, you tell them, just go there. And man, you know, why you get that mad? You wouldn't want your worst enemy to go if you knew what it was. And you better be careful. God don't flip it on you and, and, and hell come find you. Yeah, because hell wasn't made for human beings anyway. Let's get that straight. Hell was made for the devil and his angels. The Bible said that. Hell was not made for you or me. It was made for the devil, his angels, and whoever want to play with the devil. And if God could make a hell for the devil, and the devil going to be hollering, the devil will not be partying. Let's serve notice to him. Ain't going to be no party down there with the devil. Ain't going to be a whole lot of music going on down there, everybody having a good time. The devil playing with your head. The devil and the beast, the false prophet, all the enemies of God, all the wickedness is going to be tormented forever and ever. Come on. And don't let the devil, he got your food that he going to throw a party. Come on, party with me. This is a party that ain't going to stop. It'll stop. It's going to stop. The Bible tells us when it's going to stop. God has permitted Satan to be in the earth and given him a space of time. But there's coming a time when God's going to take all darkness, all lawlessness, everything that offends him in the earth, and he's going to cast it into the toilet. He's going to flush it down the toilet called hell. Yes, yes, the lake of fire. Let me get the terms right. Not hell, but the lake of fire. He's going to take everything, all the refuge in the earth, and he's going to put it in the lake of fire. Anything, anybody, God is not in prison. God can make people. There's 8 billion, nearly 8 billion people in the earth now. So don't think of ourselves more highly that heaven can't go along with you. There's people that they can out sing you, out preach you, out go to church, out love you, out serve you in the world. They have more money. They've done more big, great things. And, and a lot of some of them are going to be lost forever. See, God has no respect for persons, for people, amen, that do not have respect for his son. It's simple as that. You can't hijack his son or what his son done and think you're going to be in his kingdom. Because the place that he's going to prepare is a great place. Now, I know we're so earthly minded that we're no heavenly good. But it's supposed to be the other way. We're supposed to be thinking on that place. Because that is the place you're going to spend most of your time. Uh, fortunately for you, and maybe unfortunately for some, uh, you are a spirit that's never going to die. You're never going to die. If we took you to the cemetery and threw the dirt on you and said ashes to ashes, dust to dust, you already beat us to your resting place. We're just dealing with the shell, dealing with the can, the, the, the greens, the peas, whatever was inside, already gone. Hello? So you need to understand that uh, the reason these the Christians, the reason these scriptures, these books are not read much because they talk about the day of the Lord. Ain't a whole lot of God will supply all of my needs, even though I'm still hanging out with the devil. God will, you know, let me sin because grace has saved me, even though, you know, we're just walking all over his grace. He said grace, not grease. Yeah, by his grace you are saved, not by your grease, my grease, or you are saved. Amen. Major prophets, Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Ezekiel, I just want to throw it at you because they do prophesy 
of the good things that are coming in the coming kingdom. That, that's what their purpose was. Amen. So God said more about his second coming than his first coming in the word of the Lord. The apostles, Peter, Paul, and John, they talked about the Lord's coming, the day of the Lord. They didn't just talk about being a Christian, going to church. You know, the enemy got people thinking all church is about going to church, going to church. Man, we are learning how to live in this life so that we can go to the next life. Call me strange if what you want to, but I got, I figured this out. I ain't going to be here forever. I'm going to stay here as long as I can. Praise the Lord. I believe personally that the Lord could come and will come in my lifetime. I believe that. Everybody's supposed to believe that. The Bible, even the first Christians wanted you to believe that, that he was coming in my lifetime. They had no idea that 2,000 years ago we would still be here. But the Lord never had anybody say, when I die. You, you, that's it. You're supposed to believe he's coming in your lifetime, in your lifetime. And there's no way that you can possibly get ready if you don't think like that. I don't care what church you go to, how many members you got. I don't care what you do in church. If you are not thinking, the Lord could come in my lifetime. But most of us are taught to think I'm going to die when I get old. But a whole lot of folk died last year was in their 20s and 30s. Everybody didn't get gunned down. See, we were talking last night, man. I praise the Lord for the age that I've reached. I don't run as fast as I used to, jump as high as I used to, but thank God I've come this far by faith leaning on the Lord because a whole lot of them didn't make it. And people, every second someone is being born into the earth and every second someone is going into the afterlife. And they are not all bad people. So when we read the book or getting ready for the day of the Lord, the, the Lord sends the horses, the white horse, the red horse, the black horse, and the pale horse. Now, he, I say he sends, but when the seals are open, he's allowing the earth to finish its iniquity. He's letting the earth get done with all the sin, all the messed up thinking, all the messed up living. That's what he's doing. The white horse comes as false Christ. False Christ are people who are teaching stuff that's not true. That's the word Christ means anointing. False anointings. Anointings that are not true. Teaching lies for gain. Speaking lies and hypocrisy. The earth will be full of that. It's full of it now. But it's coming to the full. Amen. Red horse, no peace. That's what the doomsday clock is all about. We're at the place now where there's no peace. The United States had to leave Afghanistan. So now it looks like we're a two-time loser, Vietnam and Afghanistan. Our enemies are rejoicing. Boys died. Men died. My son served over there twice, maybe three times. I got friends that served in Afghanistan. Ran the hills, gave their blood, shed their blood. They died. They have funerals because the red horse. Now, is there still any peace? No, there's no peace. There's no peace in the earth. Amen. The black horse is riding and going to ride before the day of the Lord. No food. Famine and pestilence is coming through the pale horse. No food is going to hit the earth, the whole earth, not just those countries over there where they got flies on their mouth and flies on their stomachs, but the whole earth will experience it. See, the Lord is, is going to allow every human being know that if it wasn't for him, you would have no life. The great tribulation, Jesus said, for then shall be great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time. No, not ever shall be. There has never been a time that the world have seen what is about to happen. Jesus says, Great tribulation, great trouble. And the world has known great trouble. We knew World War I. We knew World War II. And World War III is also predicted in the book, I believe. There's no way that man has the weapons he has and don't use them. You don't buy 